Early in Jesus' ministry, there was a time when he was wonderfully popular and people came out in their thousands to hear him. But as time went on, some of them turned away and didn't come back. And the disciples were disappointed and they said to Jesus, where are they? What's happening? And Jesus told them a story that at one level explained to the disciples and to all the sowers who teach and share and tell others of God's love. Explained to them that sowing the word of God is not an easy task. And sometimes you'll be disappointed. Sometimes you'll be disappointed when people don't want to get involved and they put up impenetrable ba barriers as hard as the path or with fair weather followers who are enthusiastic for a while until the hot sun shines down on it and with well-meaning people who are interested but allow God to be crowded out of their lives by all of the good things that they're involved in. The task can be difficult, but we never know what will come of the seeds that we sow, because there is good soil, and people do respond and make a commitment to Jesus and the church and live lives of love and service. Like I can remember in my first parish out of college, that we had a coffee lounge operating after the evening youth service, and it was run by the young people themselves. And I remember that somehow we talked the property committee into letting us paint the old church hall with black walls and white fishnets hanging from the roof and a large anchor painted on the inside front wall and carpet offcuts of every type and colour on the floor. I remember I went to see someone I knew who had a carpet factory and I asked him if he'd like to do something for the kingdom of God. And when I explained, he said, bring your trailer along on Saturday morning. And he filled the car and the trailer with large offcuts of every type and colour. And a working bee joined them all together and they covered the floor of the hall. And after church we usually had about 60 or 70 teenagers and it could easily have got out of control as other carloads of people arrived. But I remember a few of us stood tall when we stood beside Rod Horrocks. Rod was a very good youth leader and he and his wife Lois gave unlimited time to the young people in the coffee lounge and in their own home. Rod also played football for Hawthorne and the local youth knew not to mess with him. But a few years ago we went back for a reunion and a final service because the church had combined with another and the buildings were being sold. And it was so encouraging to find that there were four of those young people in the ministry. Two in the Uniting Church, one Anglican and one Pentecostal. And there was one school chaplain and many elders and teachers and leaders who were sowing the word of God in all sorts of places and parishes. And I remember a few of us sat down over a cup of coffee afterwards and we said, you never know what will come of the seeds that we sow and what God can do with our small efforts. 
And I think it's fair to say that there are times when we might all feel a little discouraged, like when you look around and see that in some of our con congregations, the average age is getting higher and higher. And to some secretaries and treasurers and elders and church councillors, it may seem that there are not many people coming up to take over. And perhaps part of the, the message of the parable is to hang in and take some risks and keep sowing because God achieves his objectives and sometimes to our great surprise. And when we concentrate on the four types of soil, I think we must be careful not to think that the parable doesn't have all that much challenge to us because we're good soil. When in fact, I think the parable really suggests that every one of us is capable of all four types of behaviour. We're capable of putting up barriers to keep God at arm's length, like the path. We're capable of having great ideas that never get past the planning stage because we lose enthusiasm. Or our lives can be so full of good things that God gets crowded out like the weeds. But sometimes, hopefully, we are open and receptive and we listen to what God is saying and we go out and live it in our everyday lives. And so, while at one level, the parable invites us to reflect on how we can become good soil in which the word of God can take deep roots. And yet when we concentrate on the sower rather than the types of soil, we get a whole new perspective. As one who spent a fair bit of my late teens growing wheat on the Terek Plains, I am tempted to say that, that this sower is a bit crazy because he doesn't prepare the soil, he doesn't try to get rid of the weeds or the rocks or even to avoid the pathways. And so no more than a quarter of the seed lands in the ideal place. And so we ask ourselves, who is this crazy sower? Who is the sower who sows the same seed in all four soils with equal effort, equal hope and equal generosity? He doesn't evaluate the soil's quality or its potential or think that any type of soil is undeserving. And then we realise that the parable is also about the God of love. And that Jesus, Jesus is the divine sower. Jesus who proclaimed God's love to all the tax collectors and sinners of his day. All the people that the religious establishment wrote off as being like hard paths or rocks or weeds. He was prepared to shower his love on people like Matthew, the gospel writer. Matthew was a tax collector who worked for the Roman enemy and was probably regarded by most people as a traitor. Likewise, Zacchaeus and perhaps Mary Magdalene and a lot of pretty ordinary disciples. And Paul, Paul who prior to his Damascus Road experience was hunting down Christians and having them thrown into prison. And Jesus showered his love on all of these people in the hope of a future harvest. And we 
have been entrusted with the seeds of the kingdom of God. And if we sow them faithfully and well, God achieves his objectives, sometimes to our great surprise. And he still showers his love on all of us. Many of us have grown up in families and churches where the seeds of God's love were sown in our lives by parents and teachers. And others have found God in unexpected and sometimes dramatic ways. But God's seeds become people who love and serve God because we see what God is like in the life and teaching and death and resurrection of Jesus. We see what God is like And we see how much God loves us and how far God's love is prepared to go for us. And we know that we are loved and accepted and valued by the God of the universe. And we know because we experience Jesus' presence in our lives. A bit like a a close friend who's always with us to encourage and inspire and challenge and just be the driving force in our lives. And hopefully we can say with Isaac Watts what he wrote in that great hymn, Love so amazing, so divine, demands my soul my life, my all. The words are found in hymn 342, When I Survey the Wondrous Cross. Let's sing it now.